Okay, so we created two uh, instances of our ball class. But what happens if you want to create more than two, like many? So what we're going to do in this exercise, which is exercise four, called ball class array list, is we're going to use a way to store data uh, that, is a, that is a little bit more flexible than maybe your standard array, right? So we want to create multiple balls. We don't want to have to make an object name for every one of them, right? My football, my soccer ball, my baseball, that would get pretty tedious. So what we're going to do is we're going to store them in an array list. Now, before we get to array lists, let's talk about arrays. An array is a data type that is capable of storing multiple pieces of data. They're used to keep track of objects in a program by assigning them a unique known address within the collection. So you can have, if you just focus on this strip here, one, uh, a one-dimensional array that stores things at each one of these index values, right? So an apple, an orange, a peach, a pear, etc. You can also have multi-dimensional arrays, right? You can say store things in two dimensions, that you want to be able to store uh, apples, but then all different types of apples, right? Kind of like an Excel spreadsheet or any other kind of multi-dimensional list that you can think of. Now, that's great, right? Why would we need array lists if we have arrays? Well, array lists store a variable number of objects. They're, they're not multi-dimensional. They're always one-dimensional. But what types of objects, it doesn't really care uh, what they are whenever you're storing them. So you can have a float, an integer, an Apple object, etc., all within the same array list. Right? So it's not type dependent. It's generically understood as an object, which harkens back to our object-oriented programming concepts. All right? And unlike a regular array, items in an array list can be easily added or removed and array lists can store any type of data, right? So um, if we wanted to make an array that has um, five slots in one direction and 10 slots in another, that's 50 total slots uh, where we can store something. But all of a sudden, we now want to have 60. Well, we can't, we can't resize an array within processing because it's static once it's defined. It is immutable. It cannot change in terms of how many slots there are. But array lists can, right? They're um, more loose in terms of how we can use them. We can put things in and take them out. So it can be 50 elements that are stored there now, and uh, tomorrow there can be 30, and then right after that there can be 75. So it's a little bit more flexible. All right, so let's create a bunch of different ball objects in our uh, sketch window. Let's use array lists as, ways, as a way to store them. Okay, so let's go back to processing, and I'm going to save this as, this is uh, exercise four, ball class array list. Okay, on the main tab, uh, we're no longer working with functions, but we're going to work with array lists. All right. Okay, so the things that we need to change are instead of declaring a, a single variable for each ball object, here we're going to declare an array list to store multiple objects. And I'm leaving this lowercase o because they're generically objects. We don't, it doesn't really remember what type of object it is, even integer or float. All right, so this is going to change. Uh, we also need to define how many uh, balls we want to create, right? So define how many ball objects we want. Okay, this part's going to go away, uh, this chunk of code. And then down here, instead of instantiating a ball object, we want to initialize the array list. So up here, again, like kind of in the same way we did with our object, we're going to declare that there's an array list to store things. And then down here, we need to initialize it. 
actually make it usable. All right, and then afterwards, instead of instantiating one ball object, we're going to do each ball object. And the way to do this is going to be through a loop. Okay, great. And that, that's it, um, except for if we have multiple objects created, we also need to call to the main object, uh, the main update method within the class of each object. So we also have to loop through them here to update them. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, execute this. Let's write out the, the code. First, declare an array list to store multiple objects. Now, our objects are called ball. So let's think about what kind of friendly terms there might be that would go with this type of object uh, to, to make a kind of clear uh, name for our array list. Well, if I have a soccer ball and a football, let's just think of storing all of those different types of balls in a sports bag, right? So array list, sports bag, that's going to be how we declare this variable or this type of data storage, storage that we can um, use as an array list. So this is the name, and as we did with ball, we're capitalizing array list. Okay, and then um, we also need to define how many ball objects we want. So let's say that there is an integer int, the number of balls equals 20. All right, so we want 20 balls, and they're all going to go into the sports bag. So we can delete this part of the code here. Uh, we can initialize, initialize the array list by simply saying that the sports bag is equal to a new array list. Notice how this echoes a lot of the uh, kind of uh, syntax of objects, right? Array lists are essentially classes that we can use uh, so they require us to do the same thing where we use the new array list. Right? We don't have to specify anything, any arguments to start. So now we have a sports bag. And this is going to store our objects. All right? And then here, instead of just creating two, we need to instantiate um, a collection of ball objects. So we're going to use a loop. Right? So how do we set up a loop? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, survey the group. Uh, if you remember how to create a loop or to iterate through a series of actions, go ahead and drop that in the question window. And you got it. Four. We're going to use four as a way to instantiate each one of our ball objects within the context of a loop. So the, um, the syntax for this is four, open parentheses. We need a counter, which will be an integer, i equal to zero, i less than the number of balls, num balls, i plus plus, and we're separating these three statements with semicolons. And then we close parentheses, open curly brackets, go down a couple lines and close the curly brackets. So this is, inside this loop, we're going to create a ball object. All right, so Let's go ahead and do that, right? Let's take, um, we're going to use this uh, my ball statement. I'm going to cut that and put it up here. We need to make a few adjustments, right? The first is, let's go ahead and change the name of this. We're not, we don't have anything called my ball anymore. So we need to also um, declare that we're going to store this ball object in a new variable. So let's say, ball b, just simply, right, equals new ball, and let's say here, um, let's use the counter i times 30 as the way to um, determine where the ball will start in the width. Height over 2, that looks good. Then we need to take that ball and add the ball to the array list. Right, the only way that we can uh, use the sports bag is by putting the ball inside it. So we're going to say it's sports bag dot add b. All right, so this is going to add the object b 
to the array list sports bag, right? Each time we go through uh, the loop, right? So we've got now um, all the instantiation taken care of, 